In the previous video, we redirected the user to a new route with the city they selected from the list of options based on their search query. In this video, we're going to make a request to the Open Weather API to retrieve the city's weather using the params we added to the route and also learn how to handle asynchronous data with the view suspense component. Now, when we get redirected to our newly created route here, which is going to load in the city view component, we want to reach out to what is called the Open Weather API to retrieve the current weather for that particular city that the user has selected. Now, when we make a request to the Open Weather API, it's going to return a promise as most APIs do, and we want to wait for that promise to finish before loading in this component here. And to handle things properly, we're going to create a separate component, which is going to be asynchronous, which will handle in the loading for all the weather data for this particular city that the user has chosen. And then we're going to import that component here into our city view component. So within the components folder, let's create a new file here, and we're going to call this async city view dot view. And within here, let's create a new view boilerplate. So we'll use the vbase3 setup. And then like we have with most of our components or files here, we're going to remove the style tag as we're not going to be needing it. So for this portion of the video, you're going to need an account with openweathermap.org, which is what we're going to be using to retrieve the current weather information. So if you don't have an account, quickly pause the video and create yourself a free account. It should only take you a few moments to do. Once you sign in or create your free account, you should see in the navigation in the top right hand corner here, we have the name. And if we click down on here, we have some options and we want to select the option for my API keys. From here, you can then create a new API key, which you'll be using later in this video. So first off, you want to give this a name here, which I'll call the local weather. And then we just want to select generate here, which is going to generate a new API key. And then just have this key handy, as like I mentioned, we'll be using it later in this video. Back inside of the async city view component, let's first import some things that we're going to be needing here inside of our script tag. So we're going to be making an API request. So we want to import Axios first off. And we also want to get access to the current route here. And how we do that is very similar to how we got access to the router inside of our home view file. So instead of saying use router, we just want to say use route. And this is also from the view router. And we'll also create a reference to this very similar to how we did with the router by creating a new variable here and we'll call this route and then we'll set it equal to use route here. Now below this route variable here, let's create a new function to retrieve the current weather. So we'll call this function get weather data and we'll set this equal to a new arrow function. And we also want to make this function asynchronous. So we'll use the keyword async here in the beginning of this arrow function. And inside of this function to handle any errors that we might encounter, we're going to use a try catch block again. So we have our try block here and then we want to define our catch block. And for now, we're just going to console.log the error that we get if we do encounter any errors. And inside of this try block, we're going to create a new variable and we'll call this weather data and we'll set this equal to await. And then we want to say axios .get here. And then we want to head over to the openweathermap.org documentation here. And we're going to be using the API called one call API version 1.0. So we'll copy this call here and then we're going to head back over to our project and using backticks because we're going to be using interpolation, we'll paste in this endpoint. So let's replace some of these parameters here. So first off for the latitude, we're going to remove this and then we're going to enter a money sign and then our two brackets. And then we want to reference our newly created variable of route. And then to get access to the query values that we have on our URL, we just want to specify query. And then we have the query string of lat here, which we can reference. And for the longitude, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to copy this here and then we'll remove this. So we'll do money sign and paste this in here. But instead of doing the latitude, we'll just say L and G for the longitude. And for the API key, this is what we generated earlier right here. So you want to copy this and then we're just going to paste it in here for the app ID. And the last thing I'm going to add is a additional parameter for the units. And I want to change this to Imperial. Now, depending on where you live, you may want to update this to something else. So for example, by default, if you don't define this parameter, it's going to be standard, but they also have metric. And like you've seen, we also have the ability to select the Imperial type. So for this application, I wanted to take into consideration the time zone offset. And what I mean by that is, for example, let's say that you're in the Eastern Standard Time Zone like I am, and let's say it's 9 a.m. And maybe you're previewing a city on this application like Los Angeles, which is in the Pacific Standard Time Zone. 
So between the two time zones, we have a three hour offset. So if you're looking at Los Angeles at 9 a.m. in the Eastern time zone, then in the Pacific time zone, it should be 6 a.m. And we need to properly account for that within our application. So to properly handle this, I'll be pasting in some logic here, which we're going to be using some portions of our data that's returned back from the Open Weather API. So what we're doing here, first off, is we're calculating the current date and time based off some data that's returned here from the Open Weather Map API. So first off, what we're doing is we're calculating what is called the local offset, and we're going to store that value here inside of this variable local offset. And then we'll convert the current time into a UTC format and store it here inside of this variable called the UTC. And lastly, we're going to create a new property on our return data from the API called current time. And we'll set this equal to our newly created variable of UTC, which we're going to add a thousand to this. And then we're going to multiply it by another property on our return data from the API called the time zone offset. And next, what we're going to do is calculate the hourly weather offset. So this API also returns back to us hourly weather, which you want to do the same calculation for the time zone offset, which looks very similar to what we did here for the current date and time. And as I mentioned a few times throughout this series, if you do want to copy any of the markup or logic that you are seeing here, just be sure to head over to the GitHub repository. The link should be down below in the description. And you just want to find the branch that matches the video number you're currently watching, and you should be able to find the logic that you're looking for. So for example, if you want to copy this logic right here, just be sure to head to the lesson eight branch and you should be able to find it. Now, the last thing that we need to do here inside of this function is after our calculations for the time, we just want to return the actual weather data. Then we can scroll up here and collapse this function. And what we want to do next is invoke this function. So what we're going to do here is below our function of get weather data, we're going to create a new variable here called weather data, which is what we're going to use to actually reference our data inside of our markup later. And we're going to set it equal to await and then our function of get weather data. And for testing purposes, let's just log out to the console our weather data. Now back here inside of our city view component, let's import and define our async city view component here within the template. So inside of this div, let's define our async city view and have a self closing tag and let's save that. So now if we head into our console, we should hopefully see our return data from the open weather API. So here inside of the console, as you can see, we have our data, which is great. That means everything is working. However, we do have this warning from view that states that the setup function returned a promise, but it did not find any suspense component inside of the parent component tree. So here inside of our async city view component, we define what is called a top level await when we created this variable here called weather data and we set it to equal await and our function of get weather data. And as you can see here inside of our view warning, it says a component with an asynchronous setup must be nested inside of a suspense component in order to be rendered. Now, really quickly here on the view documentation, I wanted to give you a rundown of what the suspense component does. So from the documentation here, as you can see, the suspense component is a built-in component for handling asynchronous dependencies inside of a component tree. And it can also render a loading state while waiting for your asynchronous dependencies to be resolved. So here's an example of the suspense component, and it's pretty simple to understand. Now, this component has two slots. It has the default slot and also the fallback slot. In this example here, the dashboard component has some asynchronous dependencies that need to wait to be resolved. And in our case, we can think about this dashboard component as our asynchronous city view component. And the fallback content would be what you show while waiting for your data to be resolved. So for example, you could just have something as simple as loading. Now there is more to this component than I went over here within this lesson. And if you do want to learn more about the suspense component on my channel, I did recently create a video that goes over this component in more depth. To get started using suspense here in our project, the first thing that we want to do is wrap our component here inside of a suspense component. And we're going to do that with the Emmet wrap with an abbreviation and we want to say suspense. So the async city view component is going to be our default content. Now we also want to define a template here for our fallback content and we can specify this by saying pound and we can do fallback here. And for now we're just going to have a paragraph tag that says loading. So now if we refresh the page here for a split second there, you're going to see our loading message while our asynchronous data waited to resolve.